Hello YouTube and welcome back. It is now time to replace this fire alarm system, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and remove this device right here. So we'll take a screw gun and just undo these screws like so. So now we're going to pull it off of the Wagos over here. You can see that they still are spliced together, which is technically not great for supervision. But then we'll remove this flush plate and then we also have to remove this box because this is way too thin for the new devices that we're putting in. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this box because obviously this is way too shallow for a speaker strobe. Now this speaker strobe right here is gonna be mounted on a back box like this, which makes it look a little more professional. Believe it or not, this is actually an EST Genesis back box. Normally it would mount like this and you'd put a Genesis speaker strobe on it. But coincidentally, it actually fits perfectly with the E50 series. Um, it almost looks exactly like the actual box that's built for these. So we're going to go ahead and install this. Uh, I'm going to have to drill out some holes though. There we go. We put our back box up. You can see it looks a little funky because it's upside down, but once you put the unit up, it'll look really nice. So here's how I wired it. You can see I have the red going to the positive strobe, black going to the negative strobe, and then these colored wires here. Uh, the yellow and the green are for the audio, so this goes to the speaker. Technically, if you're doing this in a real application, you would want a shielded wire because for speaker circuits, if you're running it with just standard wire like this, makes it so there's a lot of interference, so you'll hear weird crackling over the speaker sometimes. But in this case, since it's such short wire runs, um, doesn't matter at all. Also, you can see I have it tapped at A, which A is 2 watts at 25 volts, so that's the loudest speaker setting. I always set these really loud in the house just because speakers aren't really that loud in general and they don't hurt your ears. So let's go ahead and install this. Let's go ahead and tighten down this last screw here and we can put the cover plate back on right here. And there we go. That is a completed unit. You can see it's on its back box, which actually looks really, really nice with this particular unit. Now let's go ahead and remove this pulse station. There's a screw at the top that's loose enough that I can just do this. Uh, as soon as I open this pulse station, I have to hold in the button so that the alarm doesn't go off. I do have the max disabled, so in the event that I accidentally release this button, the alarms are not going to go off. However, I would I just prefer to avoid that because then the door is going to slam shut and all that stuff. So um, let's go ahead and undo these screws here. Wonderful. And we can kind of slam this pull station shut and then we can go ahead and remove these screws here with this little flathead thing this right here is the box for my sigcom or firecom t-bar and as you can see it's really nice looking but it doesn't have a hole in the back so the idea for these is it's supposed to be surface mounted and then you use conduit entry but i don't want conduit entry i want to put my wires in the back so I have this box here. This is what I use for the template to drill my holes because um, that's how I drilled them in my wall. So I'll just trace this with a Sharpie and use a step bit to uh, get the metal out. Start by drilling a hole in this box with our step bit. Let's go ahead and install this box right here the wires through the holes carefully as you can see and then again we want to be sure to not damage the walls because i don't want to scrape up the paint and make this look like a messy installation so now we're going to go ahead and put our pole station here you can see i actually had to desolder these uh leads here from the circuit board because this is a addressable pole station so I want to bypass the module and just go straight to the switch. Polarity doesn't really matter because it's now just a switch. If this was an actual looped addressable system, then you would want to observe polarity. But in this case, we just put it in there. And now we open the pull station carefully. Make sure to hold in the button though so that we don't accidentally cause an alarm. And then now we can go ahead and insert our screws. There we go. Let's go ahead and close the station. Now, this pull station is finished. And as you can see, we have both of these up. It looks pretty legit. This is exactly how a system in New York City might look if it was a high-rise alarm system. So now let's go ahead and do the other devices. Here we are installing another speaker strobe in the other basement common area. Again, this is the exact same high-fidelity speaker strobe. It's tapped at 2 watts, 30 candela. Really nice-looking units. I definitely like the appearance of these things on the wall. 
I replaced this Kita B5 pulse station with an RSG T-Bar rebranded by this high-rise company. So you can see there's this little white stripe on it. The branding was ripped off according to the seller, but I think it was some sort of New York specific company. Then going into the utility room, again, another speaker strobe, another pulse station, same old. This pulse station is actually Siemens, but you actually do see a lot of these systems in New York City. In fact, a lot of these speaker strobes can actually be rebranded by Siemens. Going into the fire museum, I installed a ceiling mount speaker strobe. You can see this is a white flush ceiling speaker strobe. Looks really, really nice. The fact that this unit is mounted flush on this really big panel with a lot of space in the back makes me think that this unit is going to be extra high quality, even though it's already high fidelity. Um, next to it, I have a 2151 smoke detector, which kind of emulates the appearance of an addressable system. Just went ahead and installed this RSS strobe in the bathroom. You can see I've set it at 15K now since this is a small space. So now let's go ahead and install the garage devices. So this right here in the garage was supposed to be a really, really easy job. I mean, this is literally the quickest one because it's the end of line. But um, of course, you know, is it an easy job? No. So this right here is stripped out, this uh, hole here for the screw. Uh, it looks fine, but the threads inside are completely messed up. I think I cross-threaded it and uh, I was kind of in a rush. So. That's absolutely obnoxious because that means I have to replace this box, but it's connected to conduit. So hopefully I can just slip it out. But if I have to remove like this whole wall of conduit just to get this one box off, I'm actually going to. Yeah, so this was just as annoying as I expected. I had to rip out the whole box. It was quite a puzzle to get the conduit out because it was attached at both the top and bottom. But I guess I learned my lesson. Always uh, start the screw by hand before you use a screw or an uh, electric screwdriver or drill. Because in a lot of cases, if you start the screw wrong and you start using a drill, uh, what happens is it just strips out the entire box and you have to do this. So at least start it by hand. I guess there's only one thing left to do now that the system's finished. Well, that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. Please do like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Farewell.